Hi, this is a quick update on the One Remote. So uh, most of the pre-orders are about to ship any day now and I just finished the firmware for the ones that are going to ship and this is a short demonstration of uh, how it works. So this one is a bit, a bit beat up since it dropped it a few times but otherwise it's more or less the same as the one that's going to be shipped. And we can start by explaining the buttons. So it has two buttons. When it's switched off, it, any of them can be used to switch it on. And it will show the VESC logo and then go to the main screen. And the left button is for interacting with the board and the joystick as well. And the right one is only for going between the menus. So now you are in the main menu or in the main screen. And when you switch screens uh, nowadays, there's also an animation between them. So it will slide instead of just uh, plopping into the next one in one frame. So first screen, you see how fast they're going in kilometers an hour. And the analog meter at the top will show how much current you have in the motor. Going to the left uh, means that you are braking and going to the right means that you are accelerating. There is also status down here that shows if you are in cruise control mode or in reverse mode, which you can go into by double clicking this button. And uh, the reverse mode is, uh, works exactly the same as the other one, but everything is uh, uh, inverted on the board. And uh, next screen, you can see how much battery you have ba left in the board. You can see how much range you have left if you continue going the way you've been doing now. For this to work, you have to set out the battery and gearing and everything in rest tool. But that is uh, just normal steps in the wizard. Uh, further you can see how much, how far you've been going. And uh, then you can also see, really small the text here, how many one, what hours per kilometer you have been consuming. And uh, hence the efficiency of the board. And then last you can see how much battery I have left in the wand. Now the last battery meter is not that accurate. That's something you have to keep in mind. And the reason is that uh, in AAA batteries, you cannot simply measure the state of charge by looking at the voltage. So you can see this one more as a rough indication, whereas the first one um, is much more accurate, the one that is about the board. And then in the last screen, you have uh, the temperature of the VESC and the temperature of the motor. Now, if you have more than one motor and you set up uh, those temperatures, they will be the first, uh, the first VESC and the canvas. But the other screens, uh, especially on this one, this will be a uh, combined value of all the VESCs. So you don't have to divide the watt hours or multiply the watt hours per kilometer by the number of VESCs or something like that. If you have more than one VESC, this will take that into account. So um, let's uh, connect to the VESC and show how to use the remote. I can show by holding the right button uh, pressed for a certain amount of time, it will switch in remote off. And uh, it will also switch off if it cannot hear the VESC anymore after a certain time. Something like 10 seconds or so. So it doesn't seem like we can connect for some reason. Try it again. Yeah, now it worked. So the first thing you have to do is pair the remote. Uh, you can either use the normal input wizard as usual and choose the NRF remote or you can also use the NRF quick pair. And since you don't really have to do a lot of settings on this one, you can always use this one as a quick way to pair the remote. In either case, the, in order to pair it, the remote has to be switched off when you start the pairing. And when you put the VESC in pairing mode and you switch on the remote, the remote will switch out, uh, send out its pairing info to that VESC and then will be paired after that. And keep in mind that you can also pair it with many VESCs at the same time, so make sure that you don't do that because you, or you could do it if you only have one board or one device on at a time. But if both of them are on, then both will go if you use the same remote. So let's do the pairing. Put the VESC in pairing mode and switch this one on. And then we see the pairing was successful. It was in pair effect paired to this one before, but uh, you can do it again. And then we can switch to my other camera, or I can just drag it down here. I have two webcams connected to my computer. And then I have the board on the floor there. And uh, let's turn it upside down.
and you can see that the throttle works as you would expect acceleration and braking uh, the cruise control uh, we had some discussion on how to make it work everyone had a different opinion but i think we got a quite nice and intuitive solution in the end so uh, at any speed you can just press the button once and it will keep that speed you can press it again to throw it out of cruise control and you can also while you are in cruise control you can hold the cruise control button to increase the set point and you can also do this from standstill so you can just hold it and it will go faster and faster and this is a convenient way to adjust the speed while going uh, before we had something like you can activate it and then use the throttle to change the speed but that was not really that great because if you by accident took it out then this one would not change the speed smoothly it will accelerate fully and that can throw off the board easily which happened to me a few times so i think this was the best solution then there is also a new function that uh, is implemented on this one now and that is a kind of smart reverse function one problem that a lot of people had is that if they have uh, mountain boards and they are stuck to the board with bindings and they try to stop when it's going downhill then the brake only can brake until the board is almost standing still because it's only using regenerative braking and if the board is uh, not moving or if the motor is standing still it cannot produce any braking torque the torque is proportional to how fast the motor is turning so what i did for this case is that uh, the brake will work normally as far as long as they're going but if you try to brake fully and uh, you cannot generate the torque that you request by having the brake it will switch to duty cycle mode and slowly ramp up the duty cycle in the reverse direction and this uh, way if you're going downhill and just holding the brake fully and you're almost standing still and you cannot well slow down more it will switch mode and start to go backwards slowly and i tried this a bit and it's really really working well the good thing is that this mode is really smooth uh, because you are in duty cycle mode no speed control or no current control which is good if you want to go backward slowly i can try to demonstrate this a bit and the good thing what i want to mention in addition to being smooth it's also it also has a lot of torque so um, if you stand on the board and just stand still and use this mode it will slowly start going backwards and I, if i go forwards and brake normally it will stop and then go backwards and uh, to show that it has a lot of torque i can try to and i can also use this torque meter let's see if i can show both in the camera no that's not easy when i have it like this uh, maybe if i turn around the board so i'm holding with my foot like this now and then if you look at the torque meter at top and I hold it you will see that it increases and then I cannot really hold it with the foot anymore it will start slipping on the floor so this will take uh, take you up any hill if the board has enough torque to do that slowly and smoothly and this is really a, a really nice upgrade of the features this uh, smart reverse mode and I was a bit skeptical at first, but I used quite a bit, and uh, now I'm, uh, yeah, I'm using it all the time, and I really like it. I also liked, I liked it so much, in fact, that I also added it to the PPM map, so it should be available there too with the, today's firmware. <coughs> uh, one last thing that I can show is that you can also lock the screen of the remote. You can do this by uh, holding full break and pressing any button. <clears throat> and in this mode uh, the and in this mode uh, you cannot uh, interact with the board without unlocking the screen and unlocking you do by holding full throttle and pressing any button and the reason you have this mode rather than switching it off is that if you only switch the wand off it's quite easy to touch one of the buttons while it's in the pocket if you have it like that and then if you switch it on and it's not locked then it will it's easy to touch a throttle and make the board go away so unexpected so that's why the locking is uh, quite a convenient feature 
And you might think that since you have to do full brake and the brake will start going backwards and locking that can be a problem. But it's not really a problem because uh, I mean it doesn't really have time to start going backwards. Uh, this uh, backward motion is so slow. So even if I hold the brake to full for uh, quite a while it will take some time before the board moves. And in my experience so far that's, that has not been a problem at all. So that's everything I had for now. I hope you will like the remote if you want one. <laughs> so thanks for watching.